Summary of the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. The first scene in the book is the young narrator, Christopher John Francis Boone, finding the body of his neighbor's dog in her yard. The dog had been killed with a pitchfork. The dog's owner, Mrs. Shears, calls the cops. When they get there, they ask Christopher too many questions, and when one of them touches him roughly, Christopher hits him back. He is arrested and taken to the station by the police officer. Christopher lets his reader know that he sees and understands the world differently than most people and doesn't deal with people very well. Chris is put in a cell at the police station. Ed, his father, is called by the cops and shows up mad at them but not at Christopher. A police officer talks to Christopher and gives him a warning. If he does something wrong again, he will be punished. Christopher makes up his mind to find out who killed Wellington the dog on the way home. He makes Ed mad and tells him not to look into Wellington's death. Christopher comes home late that night and finds his dad crying in the kitchen. Christopher's teacher, Siobhan, tells him to write a story the next day, so he starts writing the story that will become the book. Christopher doesn't follow Ed's directions because they are too unclear, even though his father told him to stay out of other people's business. He goes to Mrs. Shears's house that night and asks her if she knows who killed Wellington, but she shuts the door in his face. He looks around in her yard shed and finds a pitchfork that looks just like the one that killed Wellington. But the next day, Christopher chooses to question his neighbors, even though he doesn't like talking to new people. People he talks to at first don't have any information for him and tell him to stop his research. He finally talks to Mrs. Alexander, an older woman with a dog. She talks to him and offers him something to drink, but when she goes inside to get them, Christopher thinks she might be calling the cops, so he leaves. He then thinks that Mr. Shears is most likely responsible for the murder because he divorced his wife and killed Wellington to get back at her. Ed is very mad at Christopher for continuing to look into Wellington's death when he gets home, and he tells Christopher he will stop. The reader learns more about Christopher in parts that come after the ones that describe the main action. He has trouble understanding other people, but he is very good at math and science and loves them. To get into college, he wants to take the math's A-level test. He also always tells the truth and remembers everything very well. While he doesn't like brown or yellow, he likes Sherlock Holmes stories and bases his own sleuthing work on Holmes's. They fought a lot and it was usually about him. Judy, his mother, died of a sudden heart attack two years before. Mrs. Shears did a lot of housework for his dad after she died. After a few days, Christopher sees Mrs. Alexander at the corner shop. He starts to ask her about Mr. Shears after she starts talking to him. Mrs. Alexander finally figures out that Christopher isn't telling the truth about his mother and tells him gently that his mother was cheating on him with Mr. Shears. Chris keeps a book where he writes down everything. After a few days, he leaves the book laying around by mistake, and his dad reads it. Christopher keeps looking around, which makes him very angry. When he grabs Christopher's arm, the two of them start fighting. On the last page, Ed throws the book away. Ed says sorry by taking Christopher to the zoo the next day. The next day, Christopher looks for the book in the yard and the house after school, just in case Ed took it out of the trash. He finally finds it in his dad's room, along with some packages that are written to him. Just as Ed gets home from work, he takes an envelope. He reads it alone and finds that it is from his mother, but the postmark is from 18 months after his mother was said to have died. Christopher thinks this is another puzzle to figure out. After a few days, Christopher goes back to Ed's room and finds 43 more letters written to him. He starts to read them. The tapes are full of Christopher's mother talking about her childhood and telling him about her life in London. Her reason for leaving is that she was in love with Mr. Shears and didn't think she could be a good mother to Christopher. Christopher gets sick and passes out after a while. His father comes in when he wakes up and knows what happened. Ed cries and says he's sorry for telling Christopher lies when he said he didn't know what to do about Judy going. Christopher won't talk or eat while he bathes him. Ed has learned that lying hurts more in the long run, 
so he makes the choice to be completely honest. There is no doubt that he killed Wellington because he was mad at Mrs. Shears for not wanting to be with him. Christopher starts to fear his dad because he thinks that if he killed Wellington, he might also attack Christopher. Chris waits until it's very late, then sneaks outside and hides behind the shed. Ed looks for him in the morning but can't find him. Chris asks Mrs. Shears and Mrs. Alexander for help that morning, but in the end he decides he needs to go live with his mother in London because he is no longer safe with Ed. He walks to school with Ed's bank card and his own rat, Toby, to ask Siobhan how to get to the train stop. Even though he sees his dad's car in the school parking lot, he asks a stranger on the street for directions. He gets lost on his way to the station, but he finds it by walking around in a circle. Christopher finds a table at a cafe and does math in his head to calm down. The train station is too much for him to handle. After a few hours, he looks up and sees a police officer asking him what he's doing. With Ed's bank card, the officer helps him get cash and points him in the direction of the ticket office. Christopher buys a train ticket and gets to the right stop. The police officer gets on the train right before it leaves. This time, he is told to bring Christopher back to his father. The train starts to move, though, before he can do that. The officer sets up a car to pick them up at the next stop. Christopher needs to go to the bathroom, so he hides on a luggage rack. He likes tiny places because they keep him safe from the other people on the train. The officer gets off the train because he can't find him. Chris gets off the train when it gets to London. He gets lost in the station because there are so many signs, but he finds the information desk and asks how to get to his mom's house. He is told to take the tube, which is short for the London Underground. He looks at other people in the tube stop to figure out how things work. He gets to the train platform where the train he needs to catch is, but the noise of the train scares him. He is scared and sits on a bench for hours while trains roar in and out of the tunnel. Christopher finds that Toby has gotten away when his fear fades. He sees him by the handrails and gets off. Christopher has to be pulled to safety by a man on the station just as the train comes along. Christopher finally gets on a train and gets off at the stop for his mom. He buys a street map at the station to help him get to his mom's apartment. Judy and Mr. Shears are shocked to see him when he gets there. Christopher tells her that Ed told him Judy was dead and that he never got her letters, which makes her very sad. That night, Ed shows up to look for Christopher. Christopher won't talk to him, so Mr. Shears calls the cops to help Ed leave the apartment. London is not a good place for Christopher to live. He doesn't like shopping with his mom because there are too many people. He can't see the stars and there's no yard. When he remembers that his A-level math test is next week, Judy tells him he'll have to wait until the following year. It's also clear that Mr. Shears doesn't want him around. When things get worse between her and Mr. Shears, Judy borrows his car and drives Christopher back to Ed's place. Ed is mad at Judy, but he lets them stay in the house for a while while he stays with a friend. Christopher is upset that he can't take his A-level, so he doesn't eat or sleep. The next day at school, Siobhan and Mrs. Gascoigne, the director, decide that he should still be able to take the test, so he does the first part that same afternoon. He has trouble because he hasn't slept and can't think straight. He takes the rest of the test over the next two days and feels better about it. Ed tries to make Christopher forgive him, but Christopher is still afraid of him. Judy gets her own house. Christopher doesn't like living with her. He spends short amounts of time at Ed's house but still won't talk to him. Last but not least, he lets Ed talk to him for five minutes. Ed tells him that they need to work together to fix their relationship and as a thank you, he gives Christopher a golden retriever dog. Sandy, the dog, has made her home at Ed's place and Christopher has been taking care of her there. This has led to a restoring of his relationship with his father. Christopher does well on his test and starts to prepare for the next level of a level. He wants to attend university and pursue a career in scientific research. 
he is sure of his future because he overcame many problems on his way to London and solved the murder of Wellington. About the author Mark Haddon went to Merton College, Oxford, to study literature. He worked with people who had problems for a while, and he has also been an illustrator. Before the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime, he wrote a number of successful children's stories. Since then, he has started writing books for adults. Haddon also works at Oxford University, where he teaches creative writing. He is an atheist and a vegetarian. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.